and uh, delegates. Very good morning and very happy morning. After hard discussion, so now we are moving to uh, again uh, another important domain in the field of pediatric dermatology. At the outset, I thank the organizers for giving this opportunity to stand in front of you over a period of 30 minutes. As you all know, there are three enemies for the mankind. Thermines, wars, yudhalu, karu, katakar. And the third and most important thing, day to day, door to door, which will touch and ruin our health, those are diseases. That's why God has created a powerful weapon in the name of God to conquer the disease and provide health to the nation. As you all know, though allergic diseases are growing even in developing countries, but still the infections are stands first. Especially the infections in the pediatric age group, we don't know, today it may be benign, tomorrow, or the evening it may be non-benign. It is the duty of healthcare provider to identify which is benign and which is non-benign. And treat the children. For these two, the one organ which is required, the largest organ and the largest immunological organ, that is healthy skin. It's necessary for on one side is the beauty in the field of cosmetology and another side health to maintain and to progress of uh, individual family and nation. We are on this side, the health and infections. If you see the skin, the adult dermatology, so what we are thinking that adult dermatology Though it is not a life-threatening disorders or diseases, but definitely I would say the chronic dermatological conditions are life-altered disorders. The life-altered is more painful than life-threatening disorders. But if you see on the field, the pediatric dermatology, not only a life-altered, Still, there is a life-threatening disorders because because of increased body surface area, the prematurity of kidney immune system or the possibility of intrauterine infections and trans-epidermal water loss. If you see the dermatology, periodic dermatology whether it's a pediatrician or dermatologist, 30% of OP is a pediatric dermatologist. But if you see, what is the percentage of emergencies in the pediatric dermatologist? That is the question will be posed to the audience. What is the skin which is responsible for emergencies in the field of pediatric dermatology? If you ask mother, Every case is emergency. But as a healthcare provider, the study says the 10% of dermatological conditions are emergencies. It is the duty of healthcare provider to explain to the parents which is a benign and which is non-benign. The best way is involve the parents, especially mother. Unless until you involve the mother, our treatment is not fulfilled. I would say either mother or healthcare provider. Because in adults, if you are seeing the disease in adult, the disease is confined to the, the person. But when you are seeing a child, the disease is not confined to the child. The disease is spread all over the family. That much of pain and pressure we need to understand. It is a duty of healthcare provider to see which is benign and which is non-benign. The approach is multi-pronged. 
We need any when you are approaching emergencies, we need pediatrician, we need dermatologist, and not only that, we need a skilled nursing staff. When to worry? These are emergencies because we don't know which is benign and which is non benign. Some worry points. If you see newborn, always they have to see in a detail. Even high fever and toxicity. Morphology, if you see the morphological lesions of skin, if you see the vesicles or blisters, we need to differentiate the underlying etiological factor that is more important, especially the infections, because because of premature immune system, premature of uh, kidneys, even today's denying by evening it will become lethal. And a specific therapy, when you are giving uh, children like NSAIDs or anticonvulsants, even antibiotics, always we should be careful and we have to see the immune status of the child. The alarming signs, when you see the non blanchable skin rash, what you say, purpura, it is an alarming sign. Always, though it is skin or dermatology is a surface medicine, but history and detailed examination is very, very important. Always skin pain or skin tenderness which will give maximum most of the clues to think whether it is benign or non-benign. And the mucosal involvement always, it is also one of the alarming. And don't forget that this dermatology is not a surface medicine, it is the beyond surface medicine. medicine. It, it is a cutaneous uh, lesions or markers of internal diseases. This also we have to keep it in mind and we have to look for which is a benign and which is non-benign. Always the treatment, of, uh, treatment point of view, the etiological diagnosis is very, very important. Whether it is a disease, or whether it is a drug. This is a very, very important because the treatment and prognosis is a totally different in either conditions. Fortunately, the infections are more in the pediatric age group, but remind even drugs or drug reactions are not uncommon in the pediatric age group. We need high index of suspicion. If you see the drug reactions, the something is going beyond the skin or something going in the immune status that we have to look for. Not only that, the inflammatory disorders we have to look for. So at least try to focus at these three areas at ecological level. Most of the time, you will come to a ecological conclusion. What's the diagnosis? Again, a question to the audience. Multiple bullous lesions, extensive. Bullous? Excellent. Because ISTI, even visual, sir, always we need to take ISTI. If the baby is active, no temperature, no skin tenderness. When you see the bullous impetigo, we have to look for the skin tenderness. And we have to look for the temperature, we have to look for the activity. If these are normal, even the extensive bullous, it is nothing but bullous impetigo, extensive bullous impetigo in infant. So here, the treatment is anti staphylococcal antibiotics with a complete dose and duration. These the two words is very, very important. What we are seeing the surface, we are clearing the visible inflammation or visible infection. The invisible infection we need to address. Actually, the 10 days is a course, but in my practice, what I'll follow, I'll give the course five days beyond the visible clearance of the disease. That's the best way. For some children, it will respond five days, it will four days or six days or seven days. So the invisible infection or invisible inflammation that will be covered if you extend another seven to 14 days we can give. Four, four year child, high temperature, vesicles are bullet, erosions, Nicole C positive. What's the diagnosis? Simple. Super. Forest syndrome. Uh, so I, I always I like if the audience will interfere, uh, involve with my talk, I will be more happy. So to think of the forest syndrome or staphylococcal scarlet syndrome is the clinical diagnosis. 
if you miss the diagnosis or if you delay in treatment, the mortal. If you diagnose early and if you treat early, the mortality is less than 2%. Unlike in adults. This case, immediately, immediately what we have to do, we have to admit. Uh, IV antibiotics should be given without waiting for any investigations. Empiric treatment should be sought. Then sent for the cultures, so throat swab, or etc., etc., etc. This case actually immediately we are admitted and started. Even the two days, no response. The improvement was not seen. But meanwhile, throat swab was sent and the methicillin resistant staph aureus as positive. Then on third day, we have started vancomycin. Even after vancomycin, still there is a recurrence of visible blisters. We need to give assurance to the parents. Very painful condition. Doctor, you have given the treatment, you have changed the treatment, but still my child is getting the lesions. That is the time we should give assurance to the parents. On fourth day, till third day, the visible lesions, visible blisters has come. And the temperature which is running, on fourth day, the temperature which has become plateau and the lesions which has been subsided. The three days most painful, not only for the parents, the treating doctor. Very painful condition. If you see after three days of vancomycin, all lesions are clear. And if you always watch for the temperature chart, every day you have to see the activity of the disease. The temperature is one of the best way to assess. Even on fourth day of vancomycin, the temperature has come down. The monitoring of the child is very, very important and the counselling and giving assurance to the mother is another important feature. Another child, infant, infant even not only like early stages, in the advanced stages, complete peeling of the disease. Extensive form of Ritus, Ritus, Staphylococcus syndrome. This baby, the, they have treated outside they thought of not an infective purpose, they have they thought of drug reaction, they have given steroids and uh, they have spread in a way, in an advanced form. Immediately we have admitted the case, almost it will take, it, it took three weeks to resolve. After three weeks the baby has discharged. So the, the diagnosis always which needs high index of suspicion. What's the criteria to diagnose? <coughs> Either it can be a blisters or it can be erythroderma or it can be peeling or discamation. And I, in all the ways it can be presented. Isolation is very difficult and isolation of ET, exfoliative toxin B is a culprit. And histopathological examination. So here there is antibodies, exfoliative toxin which uh, forms the antibodies against the desmoglein 1 which is situated in the, here you can see there. There is a cleavage, acantholysis. This is a confirmation. But remember the staphylococcus is exfoliative toxin A and B. The A which is responsible for bullus impetigo. But remember the bullus impetigo which will not produce to uh, the forex syndrome. It is the exfoliative toxin B. There is a remote infection either in, in the urine or in the respiratory or in the ear. And this toxin which will be transmitted into the circulation from the circulation which will reach us to the granular layer. where that's a granular layer and there is a cleavage and which will give sense to acantholysis. The diagnosis is purely clinical. Yeah. 
So the characteristic facial features always the ear, the porous syndrome, the peri or peri facial erythema, the high temperature always you should think. And always don't forget to the tenderness, skin tenderness and Nicole skin. And the most important thing is the sparing of nasal mucosa is the characteristic feature because there is no desmogrin 1 in the mucous membrane. That's why there is no cleavage of oral mucosa. That is one of the important features to differentiate from other conditions. Both are there is epidermal uh, detachment. Both there is a skin tenderness, both there is a peeling. One is infective, one is non-infective. So one is one feature which would differentiate from these two conditions are mucosal involvement. On this side, there is a mucosal involvement, here there is no mucosal involvement. So this is a porous syndrome and this is drug-induced toxic epidermal necrolysis. The treatment, once if you diagnose, uh, more 75% treatment is over. anti staphylococcal antibodies, the complete dose and duration is very important. Topical antibiotics, remember the topical antibiotic doesn't have any role because it is a toxin mediated disorder. So if you give topical anti antibiotic, it doesn't have any role. And one thing is a blister puncturing should be avoided. These are the two important messages you can catch. And the temperature regulation, fluid, electrolyte, these all is supportive therapy. And acute skin care. Skin care is also very, very important. Along with the specific therapy, the supportive therapy is very important. The forest syndrome should be admitted in the intensive care unit. It should be treated like a burns. So diagnosis is not a problem. Even neonates, the measles can be after even after six months or nine months. But varicella, which can see even in the neonates, these are 23 days. There will be multiple vesicles. Chicken pox, the treatment of varicella is different in different age groups, different in the base of the immune status. Between two and 12 years, if the child is immunocompetent, is supportive therapy sufficient. But in infants. Because of premature of immune system, we need to treat specific therapy with the form of acyclovir, 20 mg per kg per day, four times in a day, minimum period of seven to 10 days. Otherwise, there is a possibility of dissemination and the chance of infection will be there. Vesicles, in another baby, you could, you could see here too, one is the vesicles in the in neonate, another neonate, multiple vesicles and grouped vesicles. If you miss the diagnosis, there is a mortality. This child almost it is treated in outside, they thought of insect bite reaction, they have given just anti histaminic and after two days the baby has landed into NICU. There we are called for uh, the referral and immediately we have done the serology. The serology has positive for herpes and junk, junk was done, it has positive. Even if we have given IV acyclovir, we could not revive the baby. So the delay is the mortality. So any vesicular lesions in the neonate, remember for the benefit of doubt, better to rule out herpes. Herpes is a benign in adults. But herpes is not a benign in unit, herpes is not a benign in atopic patient or herpes infection is not a benign immunocompromised individual. These three areas you need to treat specific and antiviral therapy. The, with the experience of that, the second baby said, come to Gandhi hospital, immediately we have done junk and they came positive and they sent for serology and we have started the specific uh, the therapy in the form of acyclovir. After two weeks the baby has discharged. That is the diagnostic pitfalls. It has been published in the journal, you can go through. This will possibly be entering the meningoencephalitis. And second is the same type, the skin, eye, mouth type. Even in the neonate, it should not be grouped. It can be multiple vesicles. The story of this again, the nine months baby, 
history of vesicles, they went to RMP and uh, diagnosed as a drug reaction and so they have dumped uh, ex huge steroids. And the baby landed into the extensive form and came to Gandhi Hospital in the PICU. They immediately we have done the serology. The history, even history I suggest you, there is typical history of vesicles, multiple group vesicles with umbilication, with the family history, the didn't diagnose it is a varicella. So even we have given IV cycle with, but we could not revive. So the delay, the mortality. The wrong diagnosis, mortality. So it is the duty of mother to sensitize where to go. That is also very important. Mother, they don't know where to go. They immediately they rushed RMP, immediately they have sorted the steroids. The disseminated vaccine. Another important, now we are seeing so many cases. Fever followed by initially maclofabular rash in the purple crash. Always think of dengue. The clue from dermatology is white islands in a sea of red is the diagnosis you could see. The white islands in the sea of red, that is nothing but the dengue hemorrhagic fever. Because dengue to dengue hemorrhagic and dengue shock syndrome is a preventable condition. Just like if you see maclofabular rash, you can prevent SJS and TL. So the dermatologist, what is the incidence of the skin manifestations in dengue? Almost 50 to 80 percent. Those are the clues. Initially, you could not see the purpuric lesions. Initially, uh, you could see the maclofabular rash, but so evaluation of maclofabular rash is very, very important. If you see it's a maclofabular rash, but dengue, you could see a purpuric rash, so this is not a dengue, you cannot rule out. You have to watch for the lesions. <laughs> Even dengue, if you miss the diagnosis, uh, if you delay the diagnosis, dengue hemorrhagic fever. The purpura fulminance. So these are two cases also purpura fulminance has been published. You can go through the pub. What's the diagnosis? Extensive vesicular lesions. What's the clue? Vesicle. Molluscum is not a vesicle. Varicella, extensive varicella. He has symptoms, systemic symptoms, fever, malaise, varicella. Which needs admission, which needs IV specific therapy, IV acyclovir. What is say eczema hepaticum. He is a child who has come from Netherlands. He is an atopic child. Remember, in atopic, he is a compromised state. Atopic dermatitis he is an immunocompromised state. In three areas in the field ATOP, we have always we have to look for, we have to rule out. Because of atopic child, there is a compromise, extensive varicella with the systemic symptoms, eczema. Immediately we need to admit and we need to do IV acyclovir. Okay. After 30 days of IV acyclovir, so he has recovered and safely has lighted again to Netherlands. Oral lesions, eye changes, skin changes. Super. Always in the viral, viral infections, it is a, you need to differentiate. Absence of prolongs of respiratory symptoms is the clue to think. But atypical presentations may be there. So this is a criteria, I won't go in detail because of short of shortage of time. You could see for one, one point you need to remember eye changes. One is perilimbal sparing of conjunctival ingestion is the feature. That is one important feature to differentiate from the bacterial infection, what you say the scarlet fever. Where scarlet fever just like mimics uh, Kawasaki disease, but the perilimbal sparing of ingestion is the clinching point. In both conditions, there is a scar rash. In both, there is a, a strawberry tongue in the, all the rashes. This is all you know. I won't go. The treatment, oh yeah, this I won't repeat. One thing, this is uh, nothing but fever, pharyngitis, all those things is nothing but scarlet fever. So in both conditions, there is a rash, there is a scarlet fever, all those things. And how to differentiate these two from the Kawasaki is here the scarlet fever is a toxin mediated first two years, unlikely. Both in both dengue, Kawasaki and scarlet are the same age group, incidence. 
But the rash, if you see, there is a cigarette paper like scarring. If you palpate, the cigarette paper like scarring which will clue give to the stone scarlet fever. That's one. And second thing is the therapeutic challenge. If you give therapeutic challenge, anti-cephalopopal treatment, if the child is improving, that is in favor of scarlet fever. If patient is not improving within 24 to 48 hours, that is in favor of Kawasaki. That is the point you can. And one more important is the fistia lines, the peri, all those things, there is a sparing, the peripheral collisions. You have to see. What's the diagnosis? Six years male child. Admitted uh, initially, there is a uh, he has taken uh, some antibiotics, they developed rash, and mother thought of uh, uh, measles, and the treatment has continued, and the patient has landed in the mucosal involvement, skin involvement, but fortunately, no skin damage. Super excellent. So, Steven Janssen, so even immunocompetent. You could see the drug reactions, which because if you see the incidence of drug reactions in adults is 30 percent, but pediatric is only 1.5 percent literature says. But now we are seeing the so many cases, even immunocompetent individual, which needs high index of suspicion. So we have to admit supportive therapy. One point: always don't hesitate to palpate the skin of the child, which will give a clue. Because the mortality in either kind of SJS and the overlap and TN is totally different. If you stop the culprit, 50% of treatment is finished. Remaining is supportive. So after 7 days, child has improved, eating nicely and discharged. Is there overlap? Again, this is NS series. He has taken non say anti drugs, initially fever, rash, and macrobus, continued the treatment, and landed into SJS and TN. We need to admit, and this patient, the, the skin tenderness was there, the Nikolsky sign was positive, we admitted, we have given cyclosporin, we have give, I, given IV, IG. After 10 days, discharge. So the diagnosis is very important. Unless until you diagnose the treatment, it varies. This is a story almost, almost uh, you have heard in the TV, newspapers, the common case which has been referred to Gandhi Hospital, almost two weeks it has been bombarded. Actually, this patient has presented with a drug fever. If the patient has presented with drug rash, you could pick up the diagnosis of it initially macrophagy. Initially, the anti-convulsant was given. And the patient has control again, second episode has uh, occurred, and anti convulsion has continued, but in spite of developing rash, the patient running temperature. And after three weeks, they develop rash, within 24, 24 hours, the patient ran into SJS and TF. So, the differentiation of from drug rash to drug fever is very, very important. The uh, drug rash to infect to, uh, the drug fever to infect to fever is very important. One clue, if it is drug fever, there is a bradycardia. If it is infective fever, there is a tachycardia. That is the one only clue most of the time we will miss. If the patient develops rash, most of the time we will pick up. But drug fever to infective fever is the only clue if it is a bradycardia. That is the point if you pick up and if you stop the culprit, most of the time we will revive. So we have given IV, acyclovir, uh, acyclovir, IV, IG. Like and subscribe Eagle Media Works.